Alrighty, hello everybody, welcome back to the van build. I am Krishan, aka Confluence. It's been a, a little while, it's been like a month since I've managed to upload a video. Um, December was a little bit crazy. I'd kind of accepted that I was likely to miss a video because I was going down to my great aunt's funeral earlier in the month. But then while I was down there I got news of a friend dying, so yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a sad end to the year. It's rather throw me off. And I might do a bit of a video about getting back into doing stuff after after having completely been thrown off of everything. But this is about floor varnishing. Very exciting. A lot of my attempts to get footage for this were thwarted by failed time lapses. Apparently implementing a time lapse application on a phone that doesn't fail all of the time for apparently no reason is really difficult because I couldn't find one. So there's only a little bit of footage of me actually doing this, but it probably isn't that important. I should mention that I'd already started the floor varnishing, it had two coats last year, but it needed finishing, definitely because it's the floor, it needed a bit extra. As you would expect, floors get a lot of punishment. The varnish itself is from Lakeland Paints, who specialise in non-toxic, completely VOC-free paints and varnishes. And they're a bit expensive, but given their credentials and being so non-toxic, vegan, natural, all that fun stuff, they, they were the obvious choice, really. My mom heavily encouraged me to go for them, and I'm, I'm glad that I did, having spent so much time working and now living in the van, having something that's not releasing nasty organic compounds that are definitely causing just is probably a great thing to do. I recommend it. The first step was basically just to tidy everything away. There was a lot of clutter hanging about in the van. This is a good thing to do generally because the more stuff you have lying around, the harder it is to work and the harder it is to find anything. Being organized and tidy is, is definitely a good idea. I wasn't that good at it, but having like discrete steps like these where you can get everything out and just bring in what you need for the next stage is definitely good. I'm glad that that kind of happened a few times of its own volition, um, just by necessity. So we cleaned everything out, did some brushing, vacuuming, then sanded everything with a fine grit sandpaper, vacuumed that up, and then wiped everything down with a little bit of white spirit. Now in retrospect this wasn't the right thing to do because the varnish says to clean it only with sugar soap. Uh, so that's what we should have done, maybe just wiped it down with a damp cloth. That's generally what I did for subsequent varnishing after giving it the first sand, and I think that's perfectly adequate. The varnish seems to have gone on okay. I don't really know though, I don't really know how to judge this stuff because I'm so new to it. I've now done quite a lot of varnishing, but I can't exactly say with confidence that I've done it correctly. Um, the floor itself now is quite a big mess and if I'd known how quickly it was going to get so dirty and scuffed I might have gone with something else even though I love the wood effect it yeah the the warnings I'd had about it not being that practical were basically accurate it's not very practical which is sad because I really like wooden floors I really I love how wooden floors look I wanted a log cabin vibe but hey, that's just how these things go sometimes, I guess. Much like the instructions with a lot of other things in this process, the instructions for the varnish kind of assume that you know what you're doing. So they use a lot of terms, things like denibbing, that I had to go and try and figure out what they were. And a lot of the instructions seem to kind of contradict each other. Like they tell you to use a loaded, a well-loaded brush, but then they also tell you to not apply too much and to avoid overbrushing. So it's a bit confusing because if you do load, use a really low, well loaded brush you're going to get up with loads everywhere and you're going to have to brush it off. So I kind of just tried to use the spirit of the instructions to to get to something that felt about right, not doing too much brushing off but also not allowing it to pull, which is something that it also said that it wasn't going to do. But also accepting that around the screw heads there's going to be a bit of that because you just can't really avoid it. But ultimately it seemed to not matter too much how thick the coat was and if it was a little bit uneven. It seemed to kind of level off reasonably in the drying process as long as there wasn't an obvious pool. 
it seemed to be okay. So I think you can kind of focus on just just getting some on everywhere and then doing multiple coats and allowing that to basically just deal with any unevenness in how you've done it. Overall, I think it went pretty well. Everything did look good. And while I was protecting the floor during the build process, it stayed looking pretty good. But now that I'm living in it and can't protect the floor all the time, it is very dirty. Now, maybe if I just did what the instructions say and cleaned it with sugar soap, it would be fine. Because the bit under the mat in front of the door uh, has held up pretty nicely. It still looks good, it, but it's covered with a mat, so you can't see it. So but potentially I just need to actually do a better job of looking after it and cleaning more often, which I definitely should do more often. I basically did two more full coats. So I had four coats overall across the whole floor and then I had a little bit left in the tin, which I did the area underneath where I am now, which is the only bit that that's actually gonna get properly damaged. And I kind of laid that on a bit thicker. I don't know whether that's helped because there's no way to compare it with anywhere else that that's got any footfall. Uh, most of the rest of it is covered with things, so maybe you could argue that I only need to do two coats on that bit and I should have just put even more on the bits that I was going to touch more heavily. I don't really know. Varnishing. Um, doing things like the floor and the ceiling were not too bad. Um, the trickier varnishing comes to varnishing like things you've actually built boxes and cupboards and and doors for things because because of all the edges where things tend to pull but I'll, I'll go into the trials and tribulations of that at the point where it's appropriate where I've actually where I'm doing it I mean I've already done it but you know when I'm covering me doing it <laughs> there will be a bit more chatter about varnishing but for now I think that's that's basically it it's just a short video trying to get back into things hopefully get back to the weekly upload schedule maybe even do better than that but you know for now I'm just trying to get back into the swing of doing stuff um, definitely feels good to actually be doing things as much as I found it very difficult to have any motivation or, or drive or feel able to do anything it's definitely there's a there's a critical turning point where you decide that you've got to just make yourself do it anyway and know that it's that act of doing that's going to make you feel better and make you want to do more and make you happier. Um, but that I'm drifting into talking about motivation and getting stuff done and all that jazz, which is something that I would like to cover on this channel a bit because it's certainly something that I've put a lot of work into in my life, but especially in this last year. And it's the only time I've really felt like I've gotten a handle on it for any significant amount of time. So you know, maybe, maybe I've got some helpful tips that I can share with y'all. Y'all out there? Yeah, um, cool, fun, great, noises, bleep bleep. <laughs> if, uh, if this video was helpful at all, uh, a like would be much appreciated, subscribes, comments also greatly appreciated, but if regardless though, I will see you on the flip side. See it later, taters. Oh, I forgot to note that actually the the reason that I couldn't get any videos done this time is that the original recording for this video had completely messed up audio, so that's why I've had to do it again. So the next video is going to have a different... It's going to be me talking from the past about the next thing, and then hopefully everything will just return to normal. Yeah, the, the joys of recording. It's great. I promise. It's so much fun.